have to go to our next guest now, Stephen Blue, the president and CEO of Miller Ingenuity, joining me in Chicago. Stephen, hi, how are you? Good morning, how are All you? Right. Very good. We're talking about the business killers right now, seven of them, in fact, and uh, we're looking for the, for the signs, the, the bad signs that businesses need to watch out for, and then maybe if you know about them, you'll not go after those signs in, in the future. So let's talk about them. The first one is life is great. Can you, can you explain you know, that? Let, yeah, let me put that one in the context of all of them, Lauren, because uh, when you take them all together, if you're a CEO and you dismiss the uh, business killers, they might destroy your company. If you're a CEO and you ignore the business killers, they can destroy your company. If you're a CEO and you don't fix the business killers, they will destroy your companies. So you need to hire yourself an expert and get a checkup before you go belly up. Okay, got it. Um, can we just go through some of what these, these killers are? Sure. Well, let's talk about the most important ones, the biggest business killers. They're what I call the three horsemen of a business apocalypse. The first one and probably the worst one is when toxic employees are killing off your customers. As a CEO, you can't afford to have even one toxic employee. Let me give you an example. We all know what toxic employees are. It's the hostess in a restaurant that is so rude, you'll never come back there again. It's the front desk clerk who could care less if you ever stay there again, and it shows. And the problem with it is toxicity multiplies. Let's go back to the, the hostess example. I don't know how many customers she turned away that night. How many in a week? How many in a month? How many in a year? And if you consider that the average annual value of a customer in the restaurant industry is nearly $200,000, nobody can afford to have even one toxic employee. All right. Now, the second business killer that's, that's almost as dangerous as the toxic employees is when your sales team actually works for your customer. Now, you know you have this problem if you see these signs. If, whenever there's a conflict between the company and the customer, the sales guys always side with the customer. Or number two, when you try to push a price increase through, your sales guys sandbag you until you finally give up. Or number three, and finally, the one that's my favorite is when your sales team tells you that customers pay the bills. Customers do not pay the bills. Profit pays the bills. And guess what? Some of your company, customers don't even want you to have any of that. So you have to be careful of that. When your customer, when your salespeople care more about your customer than they do about your company, one of two things. Have a talk with them. Make sure they understand who's signing the paycheck. And if that doesn't work, you need new salespeople. I thought the customer was always right. Customer is not always right. You always have to keep in mind that you have to run a profitable business and you have to make sure that you provide a balance between what the customer needs and what your company needs. Otherwise, you won't have a company. Okay, good tip, because I always thought the opposite of that. Okay, then you have another tip here. Everyone makes nice meetings. What do you mean by that? Well, here's a sign that you have that problem. If when you bring your team together to have a debate about a, an opportunity or an issue or a problem, they look like an oil painting. That would be the first sign that you have what I call Midwestern nice. Midwestern people like to be nice. They don't like people not to get along. They hate conflict. But as a CEO, the last thing you want in your company is an absence of conflict. All human progress resulted from conflict. All business progress results from conflict. So why would you not want conflict in your business? The, the key is you have to have productive conflict. So here's what you do. You bring your team together and you tell them, hey, it's okay to have conflict. But more importantly, you tell them it is not okay not to engage in conflict. And number two, you teach them the tools of how to manage conflict. And then you structure and you manage and you shape that conflict so it moves the business forward. Okay. And this one I thought was great. Uh, hiding in the United States. I, I guess a lot of businesses think, well, we know the American market, right? We're American. Um, that's not always the, uh, the best uh, answer, right? The best strategy. Yeah, that's a good point because you can't win the global war on business by hiding in the United States. Now, I know that some CEOs are, you know, what I call fat, dumb, and happy. They, they, they like the illusion that it's safe and it's comfortable and it's predictable in the United States, so therefore they never go out. In fact, less than 20% of small businesses do any business outside of the United States at all. But here's the problem. 
If you're a CEO and you don't go out of the United States, first of all, you're missing a whole world of sales. In my case, my company just a few years ago had zero sales outside of the United States. Now it's 25% of our total. Hmm. But that's not the worst problem. If you don't go out of the United States, there's a horror movie coming to a theater soon <coughs> near you. And it's called The Complete and Total Destruction of Your Company by a little dinky company in a third world country that you never even heard of. So you need to get out there on their turf, learn what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. And that way, when they get here, you're more likely to survive that encounter. Stephen Blue, very clever. Thank you so much for coming on. We're going to put your website, MillerIngenuity.com, up on the screen. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Going Thank to break you. Now. We'll be back on the other side.